Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to be going through all of the five star reads that I read in the second half of the year. I did this video multiple months ago. I think it was like May or June in the middle of the year where I talked about all of the five star reads that I read in the first half of the year. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. This will be all of the five stars that I read in the second half of the year. I will say that I am filming this on the 30th of December and I have am in the middle of a couple of books that I'm enjoying so I could have another five star read but if I do you'll hear about it in my December wrap up which I think will be the next video out. Other than that we're just gonna get into it so all of the five star reads. So I have my computer here in front of me so if I continue looking down that's what I'm looking at because I have my list from my spreadsheet of all the five star reads that I have. Okay, so the first one is one that I don't actually own a physical copy of. I need to get because it's one of my favorite books of the year, I think. And that is Irresponsible Puck Boy by Eden Finley and Saxon James. I absolutely adored this book. It is a MM, friends to lovers, a hockey romance. They're on the same team. They accidentally get married and it's absolutely hilarious and just so freaking fun. And I adored it. It's my favorite in this Puck Boy series so far. Eden Finley and Saxon James are an amazing writing duo. Eden Finley is one of my all time favorite authors. So I will continue to read her books because I absolutely love her writing, especially when she writes with Saxon James and this series is just really fun and this is the best one in the series so I had to give this one five stars. So the next one that I have is one that I have a physical copy of and that is Second Semester by QB Tyler. This is a very short like novella length book and it is age gap. It is dad's best friend. She's a lawyer. She's a virgin and it's so so good. She has a relationship with her father's partner at his law firm while she's interning there and I adored this. It's my favorite QB Tyler so far of the like four or five that I've read of hers. Um, favorite one so far, only one of hers I've given five stars and for it to be so short, the spice in this book is great. QB Tyler is probably one of my favorite, like, favorite spicy authors and this one is where I like full fell in love with her. Then the third one that I have is another half physical copy of and that is Headcase by Onley James. This is book four. Yeah, book four. It says on the front. In the Necessary Evil series, this is actually my favorite in the series so far, which is funny because it's a lot of people's least favorite ser one in the series, um, but I adored it. This is a psychopath romance where it's one of the Mulvaney brothers. He is a psychopath. He is a trained killer, but he only kills bad guys. And his love interest is actually a crime reporter that has uncovered the secret and Asa kidnaps him basically uh and they fall in love it's amazing I adored it and I don't know why so many people don't like it it's like the least favorite that's a lot of people's least favorite in the series and I just don't understand because I adored it the next one that I have is actually book five in the Necessary Evil series and that is Madman it is the same sort of scenario of Headcase where it's a Mulvaney brother who is a psychopath and a killer and he falls in love. Um, they're all MM. I didn't say that, but they're all MM. And Madman is actually Asa's identical twin brother Avi's book. And Avi's love interest is a uh, intern at Avi's fashion company. So Avi's like day job is a... Uh, fashion designer and Felix, I believe his his name, is the love interest and he is actually the brother of one of the heroes from Moonstruck, I think. And it's so good. I loved it. Had to give it five stars off also. Then the next one that I have is Faking Miss Wright by Claire Kingsley. This is a fake dating romance and it is CEO assistant. It's probably one of my top favorite fake dating romances. The hero is a billionaire CEO and he finds out that his father is dating his ex-girlfriend but he doesn't want to like hurt his father by telling him that and so he pretends to not know her and he pretends that he has a girlfriend to like deter the fact the um his ex-girlfriend um who's fully a gold digger um and he calls up his assistant and is like hey I need you to show up here in a fancy dress and his assistant shows up and he's like, this is my 
girlfriend and the assistant's like, excuse me, what? Uh, and then they end up having to move in together to keep the ru ruse going and it's forced proximity, it's amazing and hilarious and I loved it. Then we have Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. I actually did a reading vlog when I first read this book so I'll link that down below. I read it um, because it's one of Jess from Peace Love Books favorite books and it is a historical uh, and it follows pirates and it's amazing. It's very dark super dark romance. Actually when I first read it I gave it four and a half stars um, and have since upped it to five stars because I do absolutely adore this book but just know that there is one specific scene that I didn't necessarily think needed to be in there um, but I understand what the author was trying to do with the progression of the story. I just think she could have done it a different way um, but I absolutely adore it. It's so dark. Please check the trigger warnings. There are so freaking many but I love the way that this book ends. I love the relationship that unfolds between the everything that's going on in this book. I don't want to say a lot because it spoils a lot but so so good. Then we have Rev to the Max by Melanie Moreland. This one is a full grumpy sunshine with a full grumpy hero who and then it has forced proximity. If you like Unraveling Him by Claire Kingsley from the Bailey Brothers series, this book you need to read this one because it gives full Evan Bailey vibes which is actually why I read it because Jen from the Book Refuge was talking about it and saying that it gave Evan Bailey vibes and I love Evan Bailey so I had to uh, read it and then I read it and I loved it. Full five stars. So so good. Just like all that grumpy sunshine that I love with that grumpy hero. So good. Then the next one that I have is By a Thread by Lucy Score. This one is a assistant boss romance um, with a heroine who is just like full sassy. Uh, and the hero is very like spoiled stuck up. So the heroine worked at a pizza place and the uh, hero comes into the pizza place with his mother and the hero is just like a big asshole and he's so rude to her and he gets her fired from this restaurant and his uh, mom goes after the heroine after she gets fired and says hey I love your sass, I love your energy, come here. He, she gives her like a business card and says come here for an interview tomorrow I want to hire you. And the heroine is like really needs a job, she's having money troubles and so she shows up at the interview uh, and the mother who owns the company is like hey I want you to be the assistant to my son and he cannot fire you. Like he does not have the authority to fire you so you do whatever you need to to get him in line and the heroine becomes so full sassy with the hero. He can't stand her but and she can't stand him but there's also the attraction and it's just so good. It's long. All of Lucy Score's books are long but it builds that tension between them so well and I just adored it. Then I have Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is book four in the... Dirty Air series. I actually only read book three and book four. Book four is my favorite in the series. I adored this book so much. It is about a uh, hero who used to be a Formula One race car driver before he got into an accident and lost part of his uh, lost one of his legs and he is now an amputee and he is hiding out in his uh villa in Italy and he just wants to get away from the world. He doesn't want to be involved in anything. He doesn't want anyone to see him. The heroine accidentally breaks into his house thinking that it's somebody else's house but he thinks that she's a paparazzi uh, and she's like I have no idea who you are. And then they end up having a fake date and it's hilarious. I loved it. Uh, the hero Santiago is just the oh, love of my life. I just adored him. So absolutely loved this book. The next one that I have is Blindside by Candy Siner. This is book two in the whatever the hell this series is called, I never know. Book one was Fair Catch. This is the best one in the series by far. So so good. It is Clay and Gianna. It is fake dating. I guess I really like fake dating now that I'm looking at all of these. Um, it is fake dating. It's also a sex lessons uh, trope which is one of my all-time favorite tropes um, and Clay is just the best hero ever. He was on my top book boyfriends of the year list. Um, I did a video so I'll link that down below if you haven't seen that but oh my gosh Clay is like if I can if nothing convinces you in the tropes to read this book just read it because of Clay. Seriously he's fantastic and I adored him. It's a football new adult romance. Amazing. Then the next one that I have is a historical 
And that is The Bride Goes Rogue by jo Joanna Shoup. This series is my favorite by far um, historical romance series that's still being published. I haven't been loving a lot of like new historicals that are coming out and this series continues to be amazing. Book two in the series, The Lady Gets Lucky, was on my top reads of the year last year. This book is amazing. It's the next one in the series. It's book three and it's Catherine and Preston. They did such a good job with this book. Catherine was told that she's engaged to Preston um, and she shows up at his office and is like, hey, I want to start planning our wedding. And Preston's like, we are not engaged. And Catherine is so confused. And Catherine is like, I've been putting my life on hold. I've been, had all of these thoughts and everything about wanting to be married. And now the guy that she thought she was getting married to isn't marrying her. And so she's like, I'm going to live my life. And she decides that she wants to be a little wild. Um, and then she meets this guy at a masked ball. Um, and they have a romance and that guy is Preston. It's great. The next one that I have is Lucian by Bethany Chris. This is another one that I read for a reading vlog so I'll link the reading vlog where I read it down below but I read this because it's one of Tori from Novel Life's favorite books and I loved it. I was so surprised. I really wasn't sure that I was going to love it. It is a mafia romance and it is full insta-love. Full insta-love and I don't like insta-love. Like there is like very few books that can pull off Insta Love, but this one did it. And I think that one of the reasons why it did it so well is because they fully acknowledged that that was weird. They were like, this rarely happens. You've known her for such a short time. And he's like, I've known you for such a short time. This is so strange. I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but this is how I feel. The communication in this book was superb. And I think that that made the Insta Love work really well because it didn't seem immature. It didn't seem like they didn't know what they were doing and like didn't know what they were going into and they were just like overtaken by their love. They were in love very quickly but they talked about it. They had this communication. They built a full like foundational relationship in very short time and it was done so well and I don't know why I haven't continued with the series but I really really loved it. Next one that I have is Captive of the Horde King by Zoe Draven. I actually think I read this one in a reading vlog also and this one is an alien romance and the best way I can describe this is alien Game of Thrones. So if you like Khal Drogo and Daenerys Targaryen's relationship in Game of Thrones, read this book because that is the full vibes that it was giving. The hero is the head of a Drakkar troop and he is a horde king. So he is uh, basically there's like a main leader, a main king, and then they are have separate leaders of these hordes where you are a horde king. Um, and one the hero in this book is a horde king. And he meets this human woman when he goes to kill her brother. Her brother broke the laws of the um, planet and so the Horde King shows up ready to kill him and she says please don't kill my brother, take me instead. And he ta takes her instead. Um, but instead of killing her he makes her his bride. Um, and she has to, she as a human has to learn the customs and traditions and what it means to be part of the Horde and what it means to be the head of the horde um, as his queen and it's fantastic. I love it. The whole series is great. I've only read the first three books in the series. I'm gonna be buddy reading the rest of the series with Avery from Avis Romance Books because we both really love the series um, but read it. It's so good. The first one is the best one that I've read so far but book three is also fantastic. Then the next one that I have is The Brazen by Willa Nash aka Devney Perry. This is my favorite one of hers in the Calamity Montana series. It is Pierce Sullivan who is another one who ended up on my top book boyfriends of the year list and Kerrigan who is the heroine would probably end up on like a top heroines of the year list if I did that. Would you want me to do that? Let me know. But I adored this book. It's a small town romance. It is billionaire. Preston is a billionaire. Um, it is a very determined heroine. Um, it's forced proximity. They get snowed in. It's so, so good. The next one that I have is another Daphne Perry, and that is The Outpost. 
Um, this one is a top tier force proximity, the heroine whose name is Sabrina and she's a writer and she exposes a criminal syndicate and she has to hide from the criminals that she exposed and she is in danger and so she goes to this small town in Montana where the hero Bo takes her to this tiny building in the middle of the woods called the outpost where sh she can stay um, and she can uh, be hidden from everyone so that she uh, can stay safe um, and she and Bo um, end up being full force proximity into this tiny tiny cabin in the woods and they fall in love. It's amazing. It's so so good. It's one of my top three favorite Devney Perrys of all time of all the ones that I've read. Would highly highly recommend. Then the next one that I have is Beautifully Broken Control by Katherine Cowles. This one is part of her Sutter Lake series and it is I think book four maybe? And this one is about a heroine whose name I believe is Kennedy and she uh, is trying to escape her life basically. Her father was um, committing a lot of crimes. He was uh, committing a lot of financial crimes. He had like a Ponzi scheme type thing where she was the one that helped turn him in and she was like what you're doing is wrong. She got him turned into the FBI or whatever and he has to go to jail and she wants to full hide from the world because her family hates her for turning her father in and the world hates her because of what her father did and so she full changes her identity, moves to this small town and just wants to live a very 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 simple life um, and she meets a guy who actually has a lot of money um, and she doesn't like that. She doesn't like that he has a lot of money. She realizes now that she grew up basically a spoiled brat and that she wants to full change her life and she's like I don't want to be around somebody who has a lot of money. Uh, and they have a romance and it's so so good and I would highly highly recommend it. The next one they have is Ever After Always by Chloe Leese. This is book three I think in the Bergman Brothers series. It is a marriage and trouble romance that was just absolutely fantastic. I love the entire Bergman Brothers series. I've given almost every single one of them five stars. I don't usually love marriage and trouble but this one was done so so well. It's Freya and Aiden. They've been married for about 10 years and are now going through a lot of struggles. They go to marriage counseling and they end up having to work out everything and realizing that how marriage is not just like easy and you have to like really work at it and it grows with you and it was really beautiful and very well done and I really connected to the hero actually Aiden. I liked him a lot and I really really loved it. Then the next one they have is The Words by Ashley Jade or A Jade. This is a rock star second chance vibes romance that is just fantastic. The hero fully uh did something very bad to the heroine. The heroine is like, I can't forgive you, but they had had a relationship sort of when they were in high school. And now it's mo many years later, the hero is a famous rock star and the heroine is hired to be his like sober coach and keep him out of the uh, press. And they have like a second chance style romance. I adored it. The angst in this book is insane. Um, it is incredibly angsty, incredibly emotional, but so freaking good and I'm so excited for the spin-off book series that comes out in January. Um, I'm It's gonna be great. Next one that I have is Give Me More which is book three in the Salacious Players Club series. This is a poly romance. Um, it is MMF and it is about a married couple who invites their best friend into their relationship. It's just something very different than I've ever read before. I thought it was done really really well. I liked the angst and the um, emotions that it was dealing with. It was a lot more than what I thought it was going to be. It was a lot more emotional than I was expecting and I thought it was done really well. Then I have One Villains Rise which is book two in the Antiheroes and Love duet. I actually liked book two better than book one. Um, this is Elena and Dante. It's a mafia romance. It's sort of grumpy sunshine maybe and sh he's more of the sunshiny one. He's a mafia don um, and she's a lawyer and they fall in love. Dante was like one of the main reasons why I really liked this duet. The next one we have a book that I can't fully cannot shut up about and I've mentioned like in like every single freaking video and that is Juniper Hill by Devney Perry. It's gonna be on my top favorite books of the year. I absolutely adore it. It's Knox and Memphis. You guys should know what it's about by now because I literally talk about it all the time but it's small town. A uh, single mother with a grumpy hero where they uh, she moves into uh, the apartment above his garage and they also work together. It's all another forced proximity one and it is fan 
fucking tastic. I love it so, so much. Then we have Hidden Waters by Catherine Cowles, which is my favorite Catherine Cowles book. It is book three in the Tattered and Torn series. It's Beckett and Addie. And Addie has escaped life from a cult. Beckett is a uh, doctor who's returned home after being in Doctors Without Borders, and they end up also having forced proximity. They end up living together. Um, and he, Beckett helps Addie uh, adjust to normal life as she's never done a whole bunch of things because she grew up in a cult. And so he helps her get a license. He helps her eat certain foods that she's never had for the first time. He helps her try new things that she's never done before. And their relationship is so cute, so good. The next one we have is Bittersweet Heart by Helena Hunting. This is Maverick and Clover's book. It is book two in the Truths, Lies, and Hearts series, I think is what it's called. Um, and it is a older woman, younger man romance. Maverick is in college. He is a hockey player and he meets Clover, who is his professor. They met before they knew he was her, uh, she was his professor. Um, and so it's student teacher, it's age gap, it's fantastic. I loved Maverick. This book really surprised me actually because I was not expecting to love it as much as I did, but it's so freaking good. It is so much better than Little, uh, Little Lies, which I actually like to give it four stars, but this one was like blew that one out of the water. Helena Hunting has fully grown with her writing since like her earlier books and it's very impressive to see how far she's come. I really, really loved this book and would highly recommend reading it. The next one that I have is another Devney Perry and that is Garnet Flats. This is the next book in the Eden series. It's the last one that's out so far. It's book three and it is a second chance romance with a uh, boxer hero. I think he's a boxer or like an MMA fighter and he left the heroine um, for reasons and he has come back to get her back. It's many, many years later. He moves to her small town to get her back and it was very angsty and good. I know that a lot of people didn't love this one. Um, they didn't think he groveled enough, but I enjoyed it and I would recommend the series. The next one that I have is actually a uh, fan fiction and it's a very short uh, dreary fanship fiction. It's Draco and Harry. It's called Dad Says and it is so it's a single dad romance. It's MM and Draco has basically it's after the war after Draco gets out of prison and everything. He is a single father and he is living in the muggle world actually. He cannot basically go anywhere in the wizarding world because everyone hates him and it's really really awful to him. They like basically attack him wherever they go and he wants to do what's best for his son but he fully feels that he needs to be punished more. He doesn't feel like he's been punished enough. He fully accepts the abuse that everyone gives him. All Even in the uh, muggle world people come after him like wizards enter the muggle world just to come after him um, and Harry sees this and helps him um, and he is in Diagon Alley one day and Harry helps him out and Scorpius, Draco's son, goes up to Harry and says, hey, I would like to send you a letter as a thank you. Can I have your like address or everything? And Harry gives Scorpius his address and Scorpius starts sending Harry letters and they be basically become pen pals and Harry falls in love with Draco through Scorpius's way of talking about him and it's fantastic and I really really loved it. It was just so cute and sweet and I really loved the fully angsty um I everyone should hate me like I deserve everything bad Draco in this book and how Harry fully invests himself into Draco and it was really cute and I liked it. The next one that I have is the book four in the Slacious Players Club and that is Mercy. This is my favorite in the Slacious Players Club. It's older woman, younger man. She is a dom and he is a brat um, and he is also the son of Emerson from book one. I adored this book. It was my favorite in the series. I really like older woman, younger man. The next one that I have is Always Practice Safe Hex by Juliet Cross. This is book four, five, whatever, in the Stay a Spell series. It is my favorite in the series so far. It is uh, Gareth and Livy's book. Gareth is a grim, Livy is a witch. They end up um, being sort of rivals. They're um, competing for the same uh, prize in this competition, but they end up having to work together. And Gareth is a amazing hero. The spice in this book was fantastic. Um, the world that Juliet Cross has created with Stay a Spell is just amazing. It made me so much more excited for the rest of the books in the series. It made me so sad that the series is also almost over. 
it's fantastic and I just adore this series so much. Then we have Lola and the Millionaires Part 2 by Catherine Moon. This is a uh, Omegaverse romance, Omegaverse Why Choose romance, that is book three technically in the Sweetverse series, but it's uh, Lola's book is a duology so this is part two in the duology. I also loved book one I think I gave it four and a half stars um but book two I gave five stars in the duology. It's so good. Lola's story is so great. I really 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 loved the healing that Lola goes through because of all the, the trauma that she has. If you want the full picture for this story though I would recommend reading Baby's Story, Baby and the Late Night Howlers. I did also like that one. I gave it four stars, but it's just not on this list because it's not five stars. But if you want Lola's full story, I would recommend reading Baby's book because Lola's, a lot of Lola's trauma happens in Baby's book. But I love Catherine Moon's Sweet Verse. I think it's fantastic. And this one is definitely my favorite in the series. Is it? Or is it Faith? I don't know. Anyway, this one was fantastic. The next one they have is The Brawl by Willen Nash aka Daphne Perry. This is the most recent book six maybe, book five in the Calamity Montana series. It is a lawyer romance. Uh, the hero is a lawyer, the heroine is a school teacher, and the hero wants to go out with the heroine but the heroine is like no thank you. Um, and then he wants to spend more time with her. And so when one of her students walks into the classroom saying, hey, I want to sue my teacher, and he finds out that she was the teacher, he agrees to help. Um, and it's so good. It had a really emotional element to it also that I just loved. And I thought it was done so, so well. And then we have Fractured Sky by Katherine Cowles. This is the last book in the Tattered and Torn series. It is Shiloh and Ramsey's book and it's the one that we were like waiting for for the entire series because Shiloh is the one that got kidnapped in book one and this was just such a beautiful story about their healing. Um, you definitely have to read the whole series in order to read this one but it was such a nice story of their healing. I really liked the uh, age gap in this. I liked Shiloh coming into her own and coming more um, strong and also allowing herself to lean on somebody because she had been like fully I need to suffer in silence for a really long time and I liked the way that Ramsey and Shiloh helped each other um, and I just thought it was really beautiful. Then I have Rewriting the Stars by Claire Kingsley. This is another book that I've talked about so freaking much since I read it. It is a rival families romance. It's single mother. He, the hero in this book, Levi, fully worships at the heroine Annika's feet. It is the absolute sweetest relationship. I love it so freaking much. Levi almost made my top boyfriends of the year list, but I had to put Evan on there and I didn't want to put two uh, from Claire Kingsley. Um, but the Bailey brothers, all of the Bailey Brothers could have ended up on my freaking book boyfriends list. I freaking love them. If you have not read the Bailey Brothers series, please read it because oh my god is it fantastic. Um, highly, highly recommend this romance. Although you do have to read the rest of the Bailey Brothers first before you can read um, Rewriting the Stars because it's the last book and you will get a fuller story that way. Then the next one that I have is Faith and the Dead End Devils by Catherine Moon. This is the last book or most recent book to come out in the sweet verse by Catherine Moon. It is a why choose omega verse. The heroine is a feral omega and the heroes are all part of a motorcycle club and I freaking loved it. It's one of the spiciest books that I've read this year and I if you like omega verse if you like why choose would highly recommend this one. Then I have another historical. It's the only other historical to end up on this list and that is Marrying Winterborn by Lisa Klapis. I love Lisa Klapis's writing. I had no doubt that this book was going to end up on a five-star list um, because Reese Winterborn is just a fantastic hero. Like that is like he is the main part of this book that I loved. Um, although I did enjoy their romance together, I thought that the story was very interesting especially because it starts when they're already in a relationship, which was really interesting for me, especially because I didn't read book one. A lot of their story happens in book one, but I still loved this book even without reading book one because I, I was able to understand what had happened just from context clues and everything. Um, and I still loved it. I still gave it five stars even though I didn't read book one. So would recommend Lisa Claypas in general, but this book is great. Then I have 
The Crush by Carla Sorensen, which I also have here. This one is a sort of second chance vibes. It's a hero who realizes that he sort of missed his opportunity to be with this heroine. Um, he's thinking about his past and thinking about like his future and he's realizing that the person that he wants to be there with him in the future is this girl who wanted to be with him um, back when he was in college, but he turned down and so he goes out and is like, hey, I want to be with you and he pursues a relationship with her now. So it does give like second chance vibes, but it's really, really good. I really liked it. It is the son of the characters from The Marriage Effect by Carla Sorensen. So if you've read The Marriage Effect, it's really fun to see all the characters from that um, and all the Ward sisters and everything. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought their romance was cool. I liked the hero Emmett. I think that he's a, did a really good uh, job. And it was just football romance. I liked it. It was nice. <laughs> Then I have Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is a small town romance. It is one that I read very recently. It is a grumpy hero. The heroine moves to a small town and her sister, her twin sister, is like awful. And her twin sister basically steals all of her stuff and abandons the, the niece. Uh, with Naomi the heroine and Naomi ends up having to be responsible for her niece that she never knew existed and also um, like getting a job and like being able to pay for shit and I really really loved it I really really loved it it is also long like I said all of Lucy Score's books are very long but I like the way that she writes I've read I think four or five of her books now they're all very long but I've enjoyed all of them and I this was just perfect timing for me also when I read this book because it was exactly what I needed is exactly what I wanted and it was just so enjoyable that I had to give it five stars then I have Real by Kennedy Ryan which I am full obsessed with it's my favorite Kennedy Ryan books that I've read now um it is a forbidden romance between a uh, director and his actress that he cast in a movie. It is a absolutely stunningly beautiful story. The heroine also deals with chronic illness and I cried during this book and that never happens to me. I'm like cold-hearted. I've read, I've cried during like four books in my entire life and this is now one of them. I am in love with this book. Then we have Hefty by Jessica Kane, which is a plus size hero romance. It's friends to lovers. It's best friend's brother. It's a short novella that I was just not expecting. I had heard that Jessica Kane was like unhinged and chaotic and wild. And I read this book expecting to get that. And what I got was a very sweet best friend's brother story of this pining and longing of them wanting to be together but not thinking that they were good enough. It was so cute and I loved it. Then I have Smash and Grab and King and Queen by Masmatix. This is book one and book three in the Relic series by Masmatix. They're dinosaur shifters. It's full of adventure and just fun. These books are so fucking fun. They're MM. They're just, if you need something that's short and sweet and just so enjoyable, if you're having a bad day or if you've been reading a lot of dark romance and need like a different like switch to just like go full sunshine these books are a bucket of sunshine and fun and hilarity and if you need to laugh I would highly recommend them and they were just perfect for me and I adored them I also loved book two in the series I gave it four stars though so it's just not on this list but this book one and book three I gave five stars the next one that I have is The Christmas Blanket by Candy Steiner this is a novella it's a holiday romance and it is a second chance um romance between a divorced couple and this one came out of nowhere I was just not expecting it but this one was so sweet and emotional and beautiful and just the perfect length for a holiday romance I don't love full book holiday romances but this was perfect length perfect emotion perfect story I just really really loved it they get snowed in it's another forced proximity one and I just fully enjoyed myself reading it then I have In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. This one is a uh, book that so many people were recommending and I had to go into it and I ended up loving it. The hero in this book is just top tier book boyfriend for me now. Up there with like Ren Bergman vibes who is one of my all-time favorite book boyfriends and he, this was just absolutely beautiful and amazing and I adored it. It's small town. It's sort of second chance-ish, um, second opportunity 
at being together, I guess. Um, and I, I full loved it. So good. I'm so excited to read the next book in the series. Then the last one that I have is actually one that I finished yesterday, which is why I wait to film this, uh, video and my top favorites of the year video because I read this book yesterday. I adore it. I gave it five stars. It's gonna end up on my top 22 of 2022 I'm pretty sure and that is Savage Hearts by JT Geisinger. This is book three in the Queens and Monsters series and this one took me full by surprise because I didn't love the first two. I gave the first one three and a half stars. I gave the second one four stars. They were good. They were fine. They were okay. This one fantastic adored this book this one is captor captive it is a um mafia it gave me um stolen air by sophie lark vibes it was just the hero is part of the bratva and he is an assassin for the bratva and he wants to kill the head of the irish mafia from book two the head of the irish mafia killed his brother and so he's like i need to kill the head of the Irish Mafia. And so he goes, he sneaks into the Irish Mafia compound or whatever, and he sees Riley, who is Sloane, the heroine from book two's sister, who's there for, for Sloane and the hero from book two's wedding. And he becomes like sort of enamored with her and he kidnaps her. And she uh, ends up getting shot in this process and he takes her to this cabin in Russia full caretaking he just has the, the those like most amazing caretaking scenes and they fall in love and they get so close and the heroine goes from being this like sort of like meek and innocent vibed to being full strength and full independence and coming into her, her own which really reminded me of uh, the heroine from Stolen Air and just having a guy who had like full like beast vibes and a heroine who had full innocent vibes to her coming into herself and being like so protective of this like beastly assassin from the Bratva obsessed obsessed I loved this so freaking much and it is just full surprise because I really did, wasn't expecting that after not loving the first two so highly recommend reading Savage Hearts if you didn't love the first two if you were like me and you were like the first two were just okay read Savage Hearts because it was fantastic <laughs> But that is the last one that I have. I had 40 something so this video I'm sure is going to be long because I talk about things a lot and all of these books were five stars but that's it for this video. I hope that you find one that you like. I obviously like a lot of forced proximity which was surprising to me um, and a lot of fake dating which was also surprising. I didn't think that those were going to be on here as much as they showed up. Um, but these are all of my five star reads from the second half of the year and I hope that you enjoy. But that's going to be it so please like this video if you liked it, subscribe so you can see more content from me and I hope that you have the best day. Bye!